Hi, everyone. <clears throat> Welcome to today's uh, Kickoff Labs marketing chat, uh, where we will eventually be talking about practical landing page copywriting, advice for people who can't write good and want to do other good stuff too. Um, I want to say a couple things uh, in the first uh, few minutes while we're waiting for people to jump online. I know that uh, not everybody uh, jumps on at the exactly 11, so there's always a few minutes for people uh, for people to, uh, to make their way into the webinar. Um, first of all, um, this recording will be available after the webinar is over, so you'll be able to re-watch parts for a while to be up on this specific URL, grow.kickofflabs.com slash copywriting that you're watching right now. Um, and then um, we'll also be sending out a recap to everyone that signed up um, that includes a bunch of additional materials, the links to all the blog posts you've been doing on copywriting recently. Um, so you'll all get that. So to answer those questions right up front, um, you can rewatch it almost immediately on this URL. Um, we'll be sending out a recap uh, early next week to people who missed um, to people who missed uh, the broadcast, the live broadcast anyway. Um, and then we're also going to be putting up a couple of resource centers on kickofflabs.com uh, for people who want to learn more and study more in depth about copywriting specifically for landing pages. So that said, we do these events live uh, because A, I think it's more fun to have a, an audience uh, to present to. B, uh, I like the interaction with the audience. I like hearing from people that are out there uh, what you're working on and understanding specifically how we can help today in the area of copywriting uh, for your landing pages. So please feel free to introduce yourself, uh, post to the chat. Uh, already I see Phil in the chat has posted and he says, Hi Josh, thanks for taking the time to put on the webinar. I'm a blogger who's struggling to get visitors to a 3D printing site, uh, 3dprintings.standtech.com from the UK. Uh, and you guys can see the exact URL in the chat. Um, and anybody else that wants to post, uh, and I can do a shout out at some point throughout the presentation to people who are here live uh, as a benefit for you guys. But Otherwise, feel free to post questions live uh, at any point in time. Um, Phil, today we're not going to be talking too much about um, getting visitors to a site. We're specifically going to be focusing on copywriting and the experience visitors have once they're on the site, similar to the, our last webinar that we did on, on design. It wasn't so much about getting visitors to the site. It was about the design of the landing pages. And this week we're talking about the, uh, the copy on the landing pages, but uh, that is our next topic. So our next uh, series will be on uh, driving traffic to contests and landing pages. And so that is something that you can look forward to in our blog and uh, email series. So, all right, um, moving on. Uh, if you weren't looking for advice on practical landing page copy, then uh, you might be in the wrong place. Because like I said, today's uh, webinar is practical landing page copywriting. Uh, I am Josh Ledgard. I'm the co-founder of Kickoff Labs. I'm a computer engineer. I rarely know the difference between your and your, where a comma goes in a sentence, uh, but I have written a lot of high converting landing pages, so if I can do it, it should be easy for uh, the rest of you. Um, <laughs> Jim says, uh, how can I up my copywriting game? I'm a web designer, and I think it's very important to have great copy. Great lead-in. Uh, we will be talking exactly about that today. And he also says, hi from Greece. Uh, I love when we have uh, international visitors uh, International visitors here. Um, a quick, uh, a quick uh, reminder. So if you don't know, um, I am the co-founder of Kickoff Labs. Um, and our aim is to help you set up viral contests in minutes. So our customers usually use our service to quickly set up refer a friend style uh, product giveaways, sweepstakes, and launches. Um, and so we'll talk a little bit about contest pages today, but uh, specifically we specialize on running these types of contests where people can unlock things for referring friends, where you want to run a leaderboard with referrals, and you want to set up a wait list. Um, and you want to do some contest email automation around that. So Kickoff Labs helps with all of those things. So setting up landing pages, contest pages, uh, giveaways, sweepstakes, and product launches. And we've helped people collect over 15 million leads with our viral contest. So it'll be interesting if anybody wants to grade our own homepage after seeing this webinar, because I certainly went through after writing it, and I said, boy, I, there's some things I should update about, the, about our own homepage. Um, 
And now that I've done that, and I've given anybody who's going to join time to start streaming the video, uh, I'm going to go on with the presentation now. So we'll switch this back to present mode. All right. I'm going to first talk about copywriting requirements. And this is a lot of the content from, uh, from the first part of our blog series on uh, things to do before you write. And I think this is extremely critical because a lot of people just don't know where to start. And if you follow some simple steps, um, you, can, uh, you can get yourself a great starting point for copy that, uh, that resonates right off the bat uh, without having to do a tremendous amount of A-B testing. Because if you're having to A-B test your way from a 2% conversion rate, then in my mind, you kind of already failed because you started with a 2% conversion rate. And it's entirely possible to start uh, with a much higher conversion rate than 2%. Uh, my first lesson is just, like myself, if you're not a writer, copy, great copy and marketing has actually never been about grammar or spelling. Uh, there's always been a lot of debate, for example, over the Apple slogan, think different. I know people told Steve Jobs they thought it should be think differently um, or that you know it didn't need a period. And people debated the grammar of the specific statement but it didn't matter because it was a bold proclamation. It was a powerful statement and it resonated with their audience because they because they knew their audience and what would resonate with them. And it didn't matter that the grammar wasn't entirely correct um, on, the, uh, on the statement. Um, they honestly could have spelled it wrong and it wouldn't have mattered too. Uh, but I'd like to think they, they at least did think about that and spelling is something you should, you should, you should think about. It. But it's not the end all and be all. So if you're not the greatest uh, speller, have somebody spell check your work. Um, if you're not the greatest at grammar, you can have somebody check your grammar, uh, but also understand that that is not what makes or breaks uh, great copy. Great copy, in my mind, is copy that converts uh, people, uh, visitors into leads and leads into customers. So if your goal is to write a, the great American novel, I think you might want to focus on upping your grammar and spelling game. If your goal is to convert visitors into customers, it's not about that. It's about having a powerful message that resonates with your customers. So how do you do that? The first thing I want people to commit themselves to is to research before you write. Uh, it's incredibly powerful to do some research before you start writing a uh, copy to understand what it is you need to be writing. Uh, a lot of people think that they just know off the top of their head what they should be writing on their on their landing page copy, and, and that's rarely the case. Uh, I pretty much it's rare that I see people get it right on the first try with all the thousands of pages we've reviewed over the years. The first thing that I want people to go through, and uh, the blog post uh, goes into this in detail, is just think about documenting the following. So just going to five competitors and writing down the set of headlines that they have on their page uh, for each of the co competitors. That'll help you understand because your customers are going to be looking at five competitors too. They're going to be looking at two or three other alternative competing services. And just understand what your customers are seeing in comparison to what you'll be writing. Um, understand the keywords that you want targeted. So if the landing page is something that you're writing for ads, um, it's incredibly important. You're probably targeting key, like advertising keywords. So understand what those are going to be in advance. And so kind of write those down so that the, the landing page is talking about those keywords. Um, like is it fast landing pages? Is it quick landing pages? Is it simple landing pages? Is it easy landing pages? Which one of those things you're really trying to focus on in this particular landing page or promotion. Another thing that's really powerful is to think about five related products. So this isn't necessarily people who are competitors out there, but let's say you're selling jeans online, for example, and you want to write up a landing page for this new kind of jeans. You have competitors that sell jeans, but there's also related products of people that sell shirts or specialize in shorts online. How are they pitching in a related market? Because you know customers don't just want jeans, they want shirts too. Um, and so how are they pitching to the customers? That leads in to the next part, which is to think about five traits shared by your ideal customers. And when I say traits, I mean things like where do they hang out online? And go one step further than saying, well, they're all on Facebook. Great. 
they're all on Facebook. So is about half the planet. Um, what groups in Facebook would your ideal customers be part of? Uh, where are they that online that you could you could look at? Are there niche community sites where people talk about things? Like in our case, there's places in online where people talk specifically about online marketing, which makes sense for us to go hang out there because we target people who uh, want to think about um, online marketing. And then what are the things that make your product special? I say three, it could be one, it could be five. But what are the things, what's the story you really want your product to be? And the next thing I tell people is before they write a landing page and they adapt the copy to a, a landing page and a design, is write a pitch email. It's like a really quick two to three paragraph email and test it on five people. Do they understand what you're pitching? Do they understand why it's important for them or could be important to them? And do they have motivation to sign up today? Um, I once uh, I once uh, um, saw somebody in Starbucks with a sign on the back of their laptop that said, uh, let me pitch you $5 latte in exchange. Um, and he was. He was getting feedback on his pitch for his product and testing out different versions of the website just while he was working at Starbucks. And I think it's a great idea that anybody could borrow from uh, to test this copy. The point is, write something down outside of the context of a landing page based on this research that you've done and just test it in the real world. Does it work if you send somebody an email? Um, and, and if it works in that context, then it'll probably work really well on a landing page. I just said the word context, and there's a couple different things that I mean by that. Uh, the first is to realize that customers don't know 1% about what you know in your space. Um, you may think, for example, that headlines on a landing page that converts really well are repetitive because you feel like you're saying the same thing over and over again. Uh, that's because you understand your product and your space so well that it seems like boring to you. But understand, customers know 1% or less of what you know about your space, ideally, if you're a good entrepreneur. What customers do know when they come to a landing page is where they came from. What did the ad say when they clicked on it? Were they in a community site that, that was talking about a specific uh, target? Um, they do know uh, that if you, and you should know if they are in, if you have separate customer audiences. For example, I see it all the time where people have a two-sided marketplace of buyers and sellers. Those are separate audiences. Don't try and pitch to buyers and sellers with the same exact landing page. Create two or three different landing pages. You might have a market for men and women. Create two separate landing pages. You might have a market for people in their 20s and people in their 30s. Those are two separate landing pages. Think about ways that you would separate the audience to isolate the context. The point being to target people uh, more specifically and speak to them more directly. And then finally, what are the potential customers going to worry about? So putting yourself in the mind of a customer, what are their fears? Uh, because anytime you trigger a customer fear on a landing page, they're likely to leave. One of the things that's a big fear is a lack of understanding. So if people look at a landing page in the headlines and they say, what the bleep is going on here, they're going to leave. That's actually just fear expressed in the form of a question. And when that happens, you lose conversions. My rule when you start writing in this pitch is to be simple, be direct, and if nothing else, please answer the question of what is this? I find so many landing pages and products and promotions that just don't ever explain what it's for. Um, and it's, it's a shame because if you don't know the what, I don't know why anybody would sign up without understanding a what. And here's a, grab, a screen grab I took from Amazon on the Echo. They literally ask the question as their main headline, what is Amazon Echo? And then they answer it right below it. They say, Amazon Echo is a hands-free speaker you control with your voice. Echo connects to the Alexa voice services to play music, provide information, no news, sports, scores, weather, all this to your desk. The point is, Amazon did this. And they realize it's important because people don't know what the product might be. And to explain that extremely clearly, uh, to the point where it was important for them to even put themselves in the customer's shoes in the headline to say, what is Amazon Echo? Because that's a fear that customers might have and just answer it directly. They didn't beat around the bush. They didn't talk about any extra information. They don't talk about AI. They don't talk about uh, anything that's ext extraneous. It's just it's a hands-free speaker you control with your voice. It's dead simple. It answers the what right up front. Once you step beyond the what, 
you start seeing copy that gets into the why question. So if I understand what you're pitching, um, I'm going to want to understand why it's important to me or why it should matter to me. And here's a great example of a why pitch, or at least part of it, uh, from Apple about the iPad Pro. Um, and because customers understand the what, it's the next generation or it's, a, it's an advanced iPad. So people get the what when they look at the page. The why they talk about is it's an uncompromised vision for personal computing for the modern world. Um, it puts incredible power that leaps past most portable PCs, so you want it because it's past port most portable PCs, and it makes complex work as natural as touching, swiping, and writing with a pencil. Those are compelling why statements. Um, and they're, they're then going to say it's more capable, versatile, and portable than anything has been before. Super. Other than the screen sizes um, and the pencil, they don't really talk about features. It's about why this is going to make an improvement in your life. Complex is going to be simple, and it's more capable than anything that's come before. And so that why is, is going right after the customer is, okay, but why do I care about a more advanced iPad? Uh, which is also a fear and a question like I talked about, but it's a direct question that you should also make sure that you're answering ideally on your page. So first have the what, then make sure you have a why. And other thing that a lot of people miss is why now? Um, why is important, and, and I want you to look at what Amazon does here, and I love using Amazon as an example because um, if you can borrow conversion tips from anybody, you should borrow them from the 10,000 pound gorillas in the marketplace because they've tested all of these things. And what they did here, and I've got a, a screen grab of a, of a knife that's for sale, um, they're doing the standard, they cross out $199, they tell you it's $79.99 with free shipping, and that's a psychological trick, but then they say there's only six left in stock, order soon. Um, and so that's, whoa, I, I wanted this knife. There's only six left. This is available to anyone in the world. Where's it? You know what? I, I checked back on this a week after I grabbed the screenshot. There were still six left. Nobody had ordered a knife. There wasn't a rush. Um, but it's powerful because it makes you think, boy, I should really order this thing soon. And so think about what is the motivation for your customer to take action right now. Now I've talked about some basic guidelines. I'm going to some more specifics on headlines and storytelling for landing pages. My first advice for your main headlines is to think about how you go bold with the headline. I love this as an example of going bold to headline. Uh, Square, which is the payment ser gateway service and payment service, uh, Square works for every business. And to prove their point, their whole landing page, they actually created a landing page for each of these scenarios, under 250K, food and beverage, over 250K, food and beverage, under 250K, and you can pick another industry like you know music or something. Um, on their landing page, you can check it out. This is the current page they have at square.com. Um, and they basically did the, what I talked about, which is they targeted for each of the specific customers a separate landing page. Um, but they're so bold about that statement. We work for every business. It's not just some business. It's not just small business. It's not large business. It's not enterprise. They went out and said, we work for every business. Um, and that is a bold statement to make for a payment provider like them. Uh, but they're not afraid to make it, and it stands out. The next thing to think about is I like to tell people for the headlines on the page. And when I say headlines, I mean in this example, the things that you see that are bold to make sure that they tell a story and they relate to uh, they relate to the story here. So in this case, it's Dropbox, and again, I, I try and go after big big examples when I can because I think that they're doing probably doing the most testing. So the headline is Dropbox works the way you do. The subheadlines I don't have to read the small text or the micro copy. I would call it micro copy or small copy. The subheadlines follow that story. So works the way you do. Take your documents anywhere. Send videos quickly. Manage your photos. And those are presumably tasks that they know that their customers want to do. They want to take their documents anywhere. They want to send videos quickly, and they want to easily manage their photos. And so the headline, the, the subheadlines all go under that main, that main headline, and they work towards telling a story. So don't have a series of unrelated feature-focused headlines. Have a series of headlines that, uh, that all play together and work together. So uh, in the blog post, we show the full example of the Square website, for example, and they tell a story about working for everyone and working for everyone quickly, 
um, and that resonates throughout the entire page. It's just a little bit too long to present here, um, but it's the same point, is that the headlines um, should tell a story, and if all I did on the page, which a lot of people do, is skim headlines, they should tell a story. The next advice is to think about the aspirational headline. And again, this headline and subheadline here tells a story, doesn't really talk about the product at all, uh, but it also gets aspirational. So it's for a budget, it's for online budgeting software called You Need a Budget. Um, this is not a pitch for them, but the point is to say uh, th their headline is aspirational. Gain total control of your money. Again, that's also bold. The, they also chose a bold font, bold white. Uh, but gain total control of your money, which is really sort of impossible. No one ever really has total control of their money, but you could gain total control of your money. That's their statement nonetheless. And then the aspirational stop living paycheck to paycheck, get out of debt, and save more money. Who doesn't want to follow that aspiration um, here? The other thing I'll point out, which is just a note for later, is you cannot miss that call to action. First of all, they chose 34 days instead of 30 days free, which stands out. Second of all, it's bold and orange in the middle of all this blue on the page. Um, it's really hard to miss that state, that, that call to action. Um, so I almost used this image twice, but I had to refrain myself from doing so. But get aspirational. Uh, think about how the customer pictures the best version of themselves when they use your product or wearing your product or purchase your product. And what's that emotion that you want them to have or that feeling you want them to have? Here they want you to feel that you have total control. Um, and there's an aspiration towards that, which is you use that control to get out of debt, save money, and stop living paycheck to paycheck. And so it's a great example of an aspirational headline. When it comes to headline writing in general, um, and I took this from, uh, in the blog post I referenced from Kissmetrics, and so they do an amazing job on their blog at talking about some of these subjects, and I couldn't have said it much better than, uh, than this, uh, this statement, which is that you want your headlines to shine. And I, I wrote the subtext to it, but um, to be specific um, about your product and the intended customer. So when I say be specific, there's lots of examples of people out there who post a headline like easy, simple, um, and those are statements that theoretically anybody should make about their product. And so try to avoid headlines that anybody could make about their product focus on headlines that only you could make about your product. Is it helpful? Will they learn something uh, when they're reading the headline? Do they learn something about you, about themselves, about the industry? Um, I personally think some of the best ads and some of the best work that Apple, for example, has ever done in advertising has been ads that are actually beneficial to existing customers and potential new customers because it explains how a feature works. People who have an iPhone watch iPhone ads and they say, oh, I didn't know I could do that, and they learn from the ad. Um, even though it's just copy you know, in the ad, uh, trying to sell more iPhones. I uh, touched on this before, so immediacy, why should they take action now? Um, is there a reason? Uh, will they get a discount if they take action now? Will they get something in exchange for it? So this is uh, to take action. Newsworthy. So this is what I talked about, about it being bold and a good story. And so you want the, headline to, the headlines to be bold and tell a good story, and that makes it newsworthy. So if something is bold, tells a great story, you want to tell your friends about it because it's newsworthy. And finally, entertaining. Does it pique the visitor's interest? And this is you know, the bonus thing on the end. Um, I would focus on the first four statements here first, but um, to leave it out, like, does it, does it make, does it get, elicit the emotion you want from the, uh, from the user, uh, from the visitor on your landing page or on your site? All right, now I'm gonna say, don't ever lead with this. God, I hate when people that lead with coming soon on their websites, um, especially for a launch, launch contest. Because what the word coming soon says for a launch promotion is there's nothing to see here, move along. But then clearly there's something they wanted you to do on this page uh, because it says get notified about their launch um, and notify me. But I've already lost interest because it said coming soon and you gave me a countdown timer. It's like, oh, in 30 days maybe I can come back. And they miss out on getting all of the emails. Uh, that come with this. So don't ever lead with coming soon on a page. That's not a story. It's not bold. It's not helpful. It's not any of the things we've talked about so far with headlines. So now let's talk about, we talked about headlines. Let's talk about the call to action for landing pages. Uh, I'm only going to repeat this from the design pers 
perspective because it's so important, which is to make your call to action easy to find. Make it stand out. That example from earlier with the orange on top of the blue stands out. This bold red on top of a dark gray stands out. You could be 10 feet away from my computer and you would see this. Um, even on the webinar um, screen, I'm sure you can see this. The next one is easy to complete. I'm not sure you can see here, but I've got two examples um, from uh, competing companies that I'm sure you've heard of, uh, Lyft and Uber. Um, and the goal is to get drivers on this landing page. And it, you can see Uber, I think, does a terrible job because they can mix it with the um, with the ride headline, and this, even though this, is a, this was grabbed from a landing page designed to get drivers, it says, ride with Uber, sign up. Um, and that's the main call to action. The secondary one is sign up to drive, and then there's this really long form. Lyft says, turn miles into money, sign up to drive with Lyft, and all they ask for is a phone number right up front. Wow, that's so much, so much incredibly simpler uh, that it's easier to get started. Now, when you enter your phone number, they send you back a link to another form to fill out all that other information. <laughs> it's not like they don't want to know your password and your city and your invite code and your first name and your last name, but they know they want people just to take step one. So whatever it is, get people just to take step one. You can always get more information later, but it might be impossible when you're asking for a ton of information up front to get all the inf everything you want out of it. Match the button in the call to action text. Now classically you've seen um, the advice for buttons that says just don't have a button say submit because you're not asking the user to submit to your will and you're not asking them to bow down to you and so you, the use of the word submit, great. I think most people have heard that advice. I rarely see people just saying submit um, in their calls to action now, which is great. Um, but now you can take that a step further. Match the button and call to action text. So here's a company that was using Kickoff Labs for their landing page. Um, and the headline is, the smart solar generator provides power anywhere and helps save on electricity at home. Sign up now and get your SolPad mobile for up to half off. And then they ask for, really simply, for a name and an email address. And the button text says, half off, please. Um, and I think that really works because it matches the headline above. And when they switched to that button text, they saw a dramatic improvement in the conversion rate of the page they saw because it was matching with the headline above. And so the headline says you could get half off. The button says you could get half off. So think about that. The other advice for button text that I give people is to just be playful with your brand and, and don't, um, you know, don't sweat, you know, being a little bit humorous uh, in, in the button text, uh, but resonate with your brand. Like if you're a brand for dogs, the button could say woof me. I, I don't know, but I love it when people get creative with the button text. It gets noticed when you're creative, um, even if it's not exactly what you, what you thought you'd be doing when you created the landing page for, for this proper business that you're running. So that's, that's where I say, you know, the entertainment value comes in. It can come in in the call to action button and text. Contest pages. So let's talk about contest pages. These are the pages that uh, one of the types of pages that we specialize in. So of course, Kickoff Labs can create pages like this where you've got a sign up page. Um, but then there's also this concept of a contest page where you're getting people to refer their friends and they're trying to enter to win something or they're trying to get more uh, referrals. Um, and you're trying to get users to take this other action. And I'm actually going to switch out of that. Um, to show this full page is a recent customer on kickoff labs and I love the page and I just want to show the whole thing and kind of walk through the notes I took when I was uh, reviewing their page uh, for them about what I liked about the page so I'm going to quit the presentation here and I'm going to switch over to the full image just so you can get a sense of the whole page here and if you look at the page some things that stand out one there's a strong brand logo at the top so many people on their thank you page it just says thanks for joining and that's it and it's not even the branded the image that they used you can't tell because i didn't show you the first page the background image and the colors and the fonts are all the same the branding resonates from uh, travels with from one page to the other um then they said thank you which is in small text and it's fine to have that in the small text because you really want them to take the next step which is You've got somebody who's engaged, they've signed up. If you are now not getting them to share with their friends, it's a lost opportunity. So at Kickoff Labs, these sharing pages and buttons, 
get our customers 35 to 50% more leads just by having some simple promotions like this. So here's their promotion. Invite friends and earn free cups. Great, right away, I could have only seen this page and the headline tells me that this is about some sort of cups. I see a baby, there's an image of cups in the background. Um, I already know what the product is and I might not have even, um, might not have even signed up on the page or I might just coming back to it later and I'm already reminded what the product was, which is great. Um, so there's a clear headline what the next step is. It's going to be to invite friends, and there's some call to action buttons right there um, that are you know Facebook, Pinterest, LinkedIn that you can take. Um, and there's also a verification reminder. So something that's uh, important for larger contests, you're running verifications, you want to somewhere near the top of the page tell people, in order to participate and qualify, you need to verify your email address. And this is just really helps cut down on the spam, because uh, if you're running a contest, it's important to really uh, to, to do that. Um, so let's go down what else they did. Um, the secondary headline reminds people about the product and also, uh, and also uh, tells what's going on. So want to score even more cups? You can find them at lowest prices for limited, limited time in Indiegogo. And then there's a short video, it's 47 seconds, that clearly explains the contest here. Um, then there's a way to check status um, that somebody can see how many friends they've invited. And this is a really simple contest. I encourage people to keep it really simple. It's just zero, you're on your way, you haven't shared with friends, but you share, you get a free cup. Five friends invited, you get one free cup. 10 friends, you get two free cups. 25 friends, you get four free cups. Uh, 50 friends, you get eight free hangable cups. Um, oh my gosh, it's so easy to explain. It's just basically, I get free cups the more people I refer. Don't make all these different rewards different and just, if possible, maybe consider just having one reward that you do. And then they, this, this website, I loved it, they even went out and they gave you tips and say sharing tips um, from the company, um, tell your inner circle, post on social media, do you know any groups that you participate in? Um, they're actually telling you, here's where you can share to help you get your friends. And again, this is something that if you're setting up the contest, it may seem easy. Well, they just click the buttons, right, don't they? No, it's not always that easy for people to understand. It's easy for me and you to understand because we're the ones who set up the contest. But they're saying they, they, they think it's so important to explain that they've got this inner circle, the social media, the groups, they're, they're teaching you how to do it. And then below, they've got a summary of the fine print. So if you're running a contest, you're gonna have a legal team um, that's always gonna request some fine print. Um, they're basically saying when the end date is, who's eligible to win, um, that it has to be unique and valid entries, and they link somewhere in there to the uh, to the full fine print. They have a, a more complete page that covers it uh, in detail, but just go go for it. So to kind of summarize, there's the fine print, there's education, there's simple rewards, more education, and then there's the call to action and the and the branding that follows the initial page. So I left some of these slides in here. Uh, I, I covered this, uh, but it, you can hear in the slide deck that you can get afterwards. Um, I talk about making it easy to understand. In this example, you could just have one goal, like get people to 10 friends and they earn a free plant. Um, just super simple to understand. Um, the next thing is that understand, don't forget the copy on the share buttons. So you have an opportunity with these contests and through Kickoff Labs to customize the text that comes when people click the Twitter, the Pinterest, the Facebook, uh, link in the email link and you get to pre-fill some of that text out And so you want to pre-fill it with some fun copy in this case can't wait for these hangable cups from Pooj want yours free um, Use this link and it's the person's uh, it's my sharing link in this case uh, to the contest And so just don't forget the copy on these buttons. There's so much copy involved in any of these uh, um, any customer engagement um, That's <laughs> and I'll talk about that later um, so let's talk about some miscellaneous things that I might not have covered in the last few minutes here. So one, uh, I, th I think social proof is important, it's not critical, and anyone can have it. And examples of social proof include numbers, quotes, and industry statements. Um, and the last one is important if you're launching a new business because industry statements are something that not everybody might, uh, the first two things you might not have if you haven't launched, you're not going to have that you've been trusted by 7,000 businesses. You're not gonna have a headline in Fortune magazine. Um, but you might have an industry quote that says, like let's say you're that solar company that says, solar power is about to take off in the United States. 
that gives people a feeling of trust and is social proof that they're participating or joining something that's important. Um, and so think about where you could have social proof on your page. Don't lead with it. It's not the only thing that should be on a page. It's just a trust factor that can be on a page. Microcopy. And so I know designers have a different definition of microcopy. My definition is anything that's not a headline. I just, it's such small points on a page. Two to three sentences per point. So the microcopy and images are there to support your headlines. They're not there to tell, to write a novel um, about each point. And so here's an example from our page about uh, reviewing landing pages. So design focus feedback. Want to make your page stand out, uh, look as good as possible? We can help that happen uh, with simple design tips and advice. All it does is just backs up the main, uh, the main headline with some additional details. And the same thing with the, uh, with the image. It sort of conveys, hey, we're going to give you some design advice. We're going to tell you how to move some things around your page. Um, it just backs up um, the headlines. And so that's how you can strengthen headlines with the microcopy and the image. But don't let the image and the microcopy overwhelm the headlines on the page that, again, as I said, are bold and they're telling a story. Some other things uh, that I see, uh, be the first to know is not an incentive, it's also a bad strategy. And I see this at least once a week when I look at um, people setting up landing pages. Um, it's the bad strategy because you might not launch for six months and if all you're telling me I'm getting is just the announcement, guess what, in six months from now you'll be working on, on this, uh, this launch, I'll have forgotten all about you that I signed up. Even if I did say, yeah, I do wanna be first to know and I'm just gonna delete your email. Um, and so even just saying follow our launch is a better strategy um, because you want to send updates along the way. Um, and so this concept of be the first to know is not really instead of like, what do I get out of it? Be the first to know. Now, if you're going to give me a discount for being first and say um, the first 500 people get a discount, that's an incentive to sign up. But just being first to know What's the follow on that? Be the first to know so I get a discount. Be the first to know so I get a username first on your social network. Um, think about what the real benefit is when you're trying it, when you're saying be the first to know, what are they really getting out of it? And focus on what they're really getting out of it, not the concept that you're just going to send them an email first. A small point, I see a lot of people use exit intent pop-ups and make sure that they are two things about exit 10 pop-ups. Make sure that the headline is different than the primary headline on the page. And in this example, you can see the headline is different than the main one on the page. It's just a slight twist. So the main headline is want to turn 50 euro into $10,000 in just three months, which sounds like a bold statement. It's specific though, and it's bold. Um, and then the pop-up says, if you're trying to leave the pages, get the exact tips our tester used to make 10K profit. And it's the same statement, but it's said differently. Um, and, uh, and what they're doing there is it's just, it, the first headline might have failed. That's why somebody was trying to leave the page. And it gives you a second chance to succeed where the first headline failed. And the other thing is to add context. In this case, there's not too much context needed uh, because basically you are giving context by saying our testers used to make 10K profit. Um, so it's about making more money. Um, but in some case, like in the product of those cups, if the, if the exit intent on the, that landing page for those cups did not mention that it was about cups, it just said your last chance is now to sign up, somebody might have left the browser window and came back to it later and all they see is this pop-up that just screams at them, sign up now. Um, and there's no context to that. And so they're going to leave the page and they ignore your, 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 your pop-up window. So make it different and add the context. Finally, there's been so much I've covered uh, today on, <laughs> on copywriting for landing pages. Uh, we talked about, uh, we talked about um, you know, how you should do some research beforehand, look at competitors. We talked about having bold headlines that are specific and tell a story. Uh, we talked about contest pages. Um, I'm sure there was a ton of advice in here. One thing I would say, the same advice we gave in the webinar for uh, design for non-designers, which was design less. <laughs> I'm gonna say the same advice applies here, is to write less, but say more with those words. And so there's two things that I've taken to heart writing um, uh, practices that I've seen work. One is that um, you, know, you write your 
two to three paragraph uh, or one page introduction to your business or your sales letter, how could you cut that in half? It's just one paragraph now or just two paragraphs instead of four. Now go to those two paragraphs and say, how could I make it one paragraph? Cut it in half again. Now go to that one paragraph and say, how could I make this a tweet? And when you go through the process of reduction, you realize you didn't need all of the words you used to say what you thought you were saying, and it says just as much. Um, and the other advantage to that is you have less copy to maintain. Every word you write on a website like this, um, and on our marketing site as an example, I feel like every word I write um, and have written is words that I eventually are gonna have to maintain um, for our customers or change, and so the less I write, but the more powerfully I write it, the less I have to maintain. And the next exercise, aside from the series of reduction, is what I typically see on landing pages is people seem to write their best copy last, and I think that's because through the process of writing the landing page, they're doing research about what they want to say on their landing page, and sometimes I find the best headline got buried at the end of a page. And so read your page from bottom up and see, does it make more sense than reading from top down? And consider reversing the order of things you say on your landing page, because I see a lot of times where the best copy is buried at the bottom of a page, and I think it's because as you write, you get better at writing about your product. But unfortunately, the first things people write are those headlines right at the top of a page, and those end up being the worst things that they wrote, as opposed to what they should be, which is it should be the best representation of your bold story that you're telling customers. If you have comments or questions, I will stick around for another few minutes in the chat online. You can also email support at kickofflabs.com, and I am josh at kickofflabs.com. I'm always happy to answer questions uh, uh, for people. I may answer them publicly. I may call you out. That's just your risk <laughs> that you, you take when you do this. Um, but go ahead and do that. Uh, the other thing that I'll say is that our next uh, webinar, uh, while I'm waiting for anyone to post a question online here. Uh, so our next webinar is going to be uh, going to be where we review your landing pages. So if you have specific copywriting questions, um, Thursday, May 18th, 11 a.m., the same time, uh, give us your landing page URL, uh, give us your email address, um, and we are going to go uh, and review your landing pages. And the URL for that is grow.kickofflabs.com. I'm going to go ahead and post this in the chat. Um, and uh, the one comment was, uh, hello from Macedonia. The webinar was great. I'm glad you enjoyed it. It was fun to put on and fun to put together. Um, and uh, feel free to share this URL with your friends so that they can watch it um, and let us know what you think. Um, one final pitch while waiting for any, any customers. Uh, to ask questions here. Uh, again, I'm Josh from kickofflabs.com, and our product helps you set up viral contests in minutes. So that's landing pages, contest pages, refer a friend style, giveaways, sweepstakes, and product launches. These are our specialties. So giveaway rewards for people referring their friends. They get five, they get a free cup. They get 10, they get two free cups. The top 10 people with referrals each get a discount this month. Or, hey, you're on a wait list. Um, we're going to let you in. If you refer more friends, you'll get into our beta. Um, we, uh, we focus on those types of pages, and we try and make that really simple. Uh, so going back to comments and questions, Jim asked, do you have some recommendations for copy inspiration? Yeah, there's a lot of people I follow for copy inspiration. Um, and um, and I, I don't off the top of my head, I'm not going to give the links. Um, but um, uh, Joanna Weebly uh, and uh, and Copy Blogger are the two big ones that come to mind online. And I'm not going to dig up the links uh, here, but I can uh, I can put that in the recap mail um, as a question that came up. Um, they're great for for inspiration or conversion focused in, uh, copy inspiration. Um, like I said, Jim, my other inspiration is uh, what I mentioned online, which is looking at some of the bigger players. And I spend a lot of time looking at how Amazon does their copy, how Apple does their copy, how Google does their copy, and how Microsoft does their copy. Because I know from talking to them that they have teams of people uh, that, work on, uh, that work on the copy, um, that, that work on it um, throughout, the, uh, throughout the year, then dedicated. And so anywhere where you have people where they're doing that kind of research for you, you can borrow from what they learn. So it's a great question. 
Um, and so some specific people and then uh, the big players. And then if there's you're starting a smaller product, there's bigger players in your space, you can always learn from what uh, the people ahead of you in the marketplace are doing. And I'm not saying you copy from them, but you can learn the techniques that they're using um, and you can apply those techniques to your business. All right, I will stick around in the chat. I'm gonna end the live video feed and if anybody has a question, I'll be around for five more minutes in the chat. Uh, this was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you tell your friends about the, the, uh, the webinar and Kickoff Labs and uh, I'd love to uh, help you guys out as customers in the future. Thanks.